Hi, my name is JT Scott, and I'm the Ward 2 City Councilor here in Somerville. I'm humbled by the support of the people of Ward 2 and grateful for the opportunity to serve for another two years as your representative in City Hall. Two years ago, I ran to overturn the status quo and put an end to business as usual in this city on a platform of accountability, transparency, and affordability with a personal goal of increasing the green and open space we so desperately need. Looking back at the last two years, we've made a great deal of progress. I've transformed our confirmation of appointments committee from a rubber stamp into a meaningful check on our mayor's expansive authority, as it was intended to be. In terms of accountability, one need look no further than the decisive action taken to reject several appointments to the boards that govern special building permits and put pressure on this mayor to appoint qualified candidates who share our community's values rather than being willing to approve every developer-friendly backroom deal brought before them. In addition, I've led the charge on reining in wasteful spending at City Hall, cutting a million dollars from our city budget in both 2018 and 2019, not by eliminating jobs or services, but simply by putting a focus on the responsible use of taxpayer money and cutting out the slush funds that allow our mayor to tax the levy limit every year and spend without proper oversight by the city council. That fiscal responsibility doesn't just stop at property taxes. I've also fought against sewer and water rate hikes, and I'm holding utilities like Eversource accountable for their role in project delays and cost overruns on vital city infrastructure projects. Increasing transparency has also been at the forefront of my endeavors. Every Friday morning, I host office hours at my home from 8 to 10 a.m. And it's been great to have so many neighbors stop by to talk about the issues we all care about and work together to make progress. I've also hosted over 60 neighborhood meetings in the first 18 months in office, requiring the developers that want to profit from our homes to work with residents to produce projects that benefit the neighborhood, not just enrich the developers. It's working, and we're seeing projects that increase affordability, alleviate flooding, and respect the neighborhood. Working with developers to get the kind of projects that work for the city requires not being beholden to them, which is why I've never accepted a single campaign contribution from real estate brokers or developers, and why I never will. Being an advocate for the people must mean being accountable only to them. And that's why you've trusted me to work with you on these projects and more including getting the largest current commercial development in Somerville started right here in Boynton Yards, creating more jobs and shoring up the financial stability of our city. It's not an accident that fast progress gets made when we work together transparently. The era of backroom deals in Somerville must end, and we're setting an example here in Ward 2 of how we can do better. Just uh, one final note on transparency, I've worked hard in the past two years to elevate an intersectional awareness in our city's hiring and personnel practices. We've made some great strides reforming the civil service hiring process, long abused, and thanks to my persistent Freedom of Information Act requests and advocacy, we finally have an accounting of sexual harassment incidents in City Hall. It's said that sunlight is the best disinfectant. And I'll keep the focus on these issues in the next two years with my proposed municipal Title IX ordinance and even more scrutiny on our hiring and recruitment processes. Now, the biggest single issue facing some of our residents in the short term is affordability. And I'm proud of the progress made with my colleagues in this first term. We've passed a condo conversion ordinance that protects tenants and will prevent displacement in our neighborhoods. FDR said, you can judge me by the enemies I've made. And it's easy to see that this is a real measure that stands for the people and against developers. <laughs> They've already taken us to court to try to stop it. In addition, we worked with this mayor to create the Office of Housing Stability, a new city department staffed with resident allies who are fully devoted to stopping displacement and helping us put even stronger protections in place. We passed a developer tax to the State House, and we'll continue to push this until this important revenue source for affordable housing is a reality here in Somerville. And the work isn't done, and I've got some exciting plans for the next term. But the work isn't just happening in City Hall. Thanks to a dedicated efforts of a passionate volunteer force, we've also seen the creation this year of the Somerville Community Land Trust as a vital vehicle for creating permanent affordable housing. It operates as a completely independent nonprofit entity by the people and for the people. 
I encourage you to check out SomervilleCommunityLandTrust.org to find out more and get involved. While affordability is a crucial issue and the most pressing short-term need, our shortage of green and open space has dire consequences when looking at one of the most critical long-term issues we face here, climate change. The damage done by clear-cutting our few remaining trees will take a hundred years to undo. Every green space we lose makes issues like urban heat island effect worse and increasing energy and health care costs for residents, impacting the health of our most vulnerable neighbors. We must stop and reverse these tragedies. That's why I'm proud to have worked with local advocates to get the Urban Forestry Committee staffed and to implement the Tree Protection Ordinance. That's why I'm going to continue to fight for the preservation of our few remaining green spaces, and that's why I'm going to keep pushing this mayor to allocate real funding to creating more publicly owned green space. Our futures and our children's futures depend on it. Now, these aren't the only issues I've worked on. There's too much facing us, from pedestrian safety to infrastructure improvement, bike and transit access to traffic management, gender equity to immigrant protections, preventing wage theft to increasing job opportunities, constituent services to managing the opioid epidemic that continues to ravage our youth. But just as with all these issues and more, none of this can happen without the support of my colleagues and even more importantly, the activism of you, the residents of Somerville. In our strong mayor form of government, I can write and pass laws but I can't allocate funds to these priorities. Only the mayor can do that. And only with all of our voices raised together can we be heard over the clamoring of moneyed special interests all the way to the top of City Hall. That's why for the next two years, I'll be continuing to do the most important work of all, not at City Hall, but in the streets of our neighborhoods as we bring each other together, lift each other up, and strive together with transparency and accountability to do better for all of us. Thank you for all that you've done and all that we'll do together in the next two years.